Hey everyone, it's Sunday the 13th of October and it's almost 1 o'clock in the morning. It's been a while since I've done a video at this sort of time of night. But I uh, didn't sleep very well the night before because of hay fever and whatnot. And yeah, I'm still waiting for the antihistamine to kick in that I had earlier. Anyway, Kat, a really good friend of mine, um, was asking me about how to power the lighting for her model railway. Um, and she sent me some links on the type of lights that she's bought. She's also got the pack of assorted resistors. Um, there's a thousand of them, so I'm sure the ones that we'll need will be in there somewhere. <laughs> um, what else was there? And a power supply. Now I suggested to use a PC power supply because it just it'll save on needing multiple different power supplies for different voltages and things. Um, there's there's more than one way you could do this. So what I'm going to do in this video, I've got two laptops I'm going to take apart. Well, one of them I haven't decided on, but one I will. Um, but first, I want to show you how to go about converting one of these into a power supply that you can use. And I'll also tell you the voltages of the wires that you will most likely need to use for other projects and things. I've even seen videos on YouTube where people have converted these to a benchtop power supply. Anywho. So this is just a standard ATX power supply for a computer. I don't know how old it is. I don't know what the wattage is. I just grabbed it out of my cupboard. Um, just to do this little demonstration with. It's one that I'm not really fussed about. So, ordinarily, in order to activate the power supply, you'd have to have it plugged into a computer motherboard. You'd have that one plugged in, you'd have the 12 volt one plugged in as well, which is that one, for your processor. Some old motherboards didn't even have that. Um, and then on the motherboard you'd have your power button, which is usually on the front or the top of your computer. That would then plug onto a connector on your motherboard, so when you press it, it activates that. But you can do it without that. And what you need to do is get your 20 or 24 pin, depending on the power supply. Usually these last four pins can remove. That one doesn't want to. What you need to do is either, if you don't want to destroy the power supply, then you can just poke a piece of wire in. Let's try and get you. I'll zoom in. That might be the easiest option, wouldn't it? Uh, is to either poke a little bit of wire in there where this green wire is, the one that lines up with that green wire, and then the other end of that wire loop it round to any one of the black ones. That way you haven't got to cut any wires or anything and you can save your power supply as well. Just That's ideal if you just need it temporarily. If you want to do a more permanent job, you're going to need these. All you do, cut the green one, like so, and then pick any one of the black ones, because they are your grounds. So all you're doing is basically shorten that green wire to ground. So once you've got your two wires, you can either A, connect a switch on the end of them, just an ordinary toggle switch or something like that. Or, if you don't require a switch, like maybe the power supply has got a switch on the back, like this one has, so really you wouldn't need it, you could just use the switch on the back. Or you could put one on here for more convenience. Bare the ends, I could have done that. Sharper pair of wire cutters, I think. All you would do strip the ends of your wire, 
And I'm only going to do this temporarily, but if you want to do a good job, if you are just going to put these wires together, drop a bit of solder over them for a stronger joint, and then put a bit of a heat shrink over the end of that as a bit of protection. But just as an example here, because I have got some things here that I'm going to try in a minute, see if we can get them powered up. That's all you got to do. And just blob a bit of solder on there if you want, and then well, you could put a you know a butt crimp on there as well, anything like that, just to make that a bit more secure. And if you're going to solder it, then like I said, just put a bit of heat shrink over it, and that'll protect it. You could even just trim that down if you're going to solder it. So now, when you power this power supply up, and in this case, when I flip that switch on it will turn straight on. Now, you're going to need to know what voltage comes out of what wire out of this lot, <laughs> out of this spaghetti. Well, I'm going to start with the lowest one. Your orange ones here are 3.3 volts, so they're your lowest. Your yellow, all the yellows, are 12 volt. And your reds are 5 volt, and all the blacks are your grams. So, what I'm going to do with this one is uh, snip them off. Actually, what I've done here, I've written them down so you want to screen cap that so you've got something uh, you can um, come back to later. You know, just make a little screen cap. We'll pause the video. Alright, where was I? Oh yeah, that. Oh, I'm going to need a power cable, aren't I? I had a load out here yesterday, and now I can't remember what I did with them. Um, that. How do I here? I was, um... I was uh, upgrading a friend's PC yesterday. Um, I had a bit of GPU for him because his old one's now over here somewhere. Hang on. Can't remember what it is. But it only had two gigs of you know video RAM on it. Not a bad GPU, but not really adequate for a lot of modern gaming. Some of his games were struggling a bit, um, but not so long back I bought a job lot of computer bits and those two um, GTX 1030i's in there. I think they were eyes, or they could be the 1030's, I can't remember. Now I can't remember what I did with one of them, but I kept one aside specifically to put in his, but I couldn't upgrade it at the time, because neither of the monitors he had, had HDMI inputs. They were only VGA or DVI. And I didn't have any adapters or anything. I didn't know how good any adapters would be. So I just kept it aside here um, until I found a monitor or whatever. And I did fairly recently. I actually found a Dell monitor in one of the local charity shops. So I swapped that out for my secondary monitor and then gave him my um, secondary monitor. And uh, upgraded his uh, PC to a, a 1030. Which is working well. The only problem is, the very next day, when he turned the computer on the, the um, next morning, one of his hard drives was making the dreaded click every time he accessed it. Um, and he did figure out what drive it is. It's his drive E, which is what's got most of his Steam games on. Um, I mean, things seem to be working fine. But, uh, you know, when your hard drive starts making that death click, it hasn't got long left. And I said, try not to play any games on it. Because we don't want that drive to die 
before we've had a chance to swap all the data over. So over here, I've got one in there as well. I found a couple of uh, one terabyte drives. So if I feel up to it tomorrow, I will um, just whiz over to his and swap the hard drive out and then we can switch the data over and whatnot. Now this is one of those uh, CB radios. I momentarily forgot what they were called. So I'll just strip back one of the 12 volt wires. And we need one of the grounds. Um, Cat was actually asking me what size power supply to get. D depends what you're doing with it, really. Um, you know, she asked, did she need like a 1000 watt? I was like, yeah, that's a bit overkill for a, a handful of LED lights. You know, her layout is actually smaller in size than mine, so. Um, I even think 500 might be a bit overkill, but I would rather go overkill than underkill. But uh, 1000 watts would be way overkill for that sort of thing. Right, so we're now connected up. If I was actually going to do this permanent, I would put like some heat shrink on there and some solder. But as this is just temporary, I don't even know if that fuse in there is any good. I've shown us age with that style of fuse carrier. So there's that, that's that, that's turned on. Well, we've got a light on our CB radio here. Let's make sure those wires stay apart. I've just noticed we've got no LED display here lit up. Do I need to... Got some various... Ah, so that's the power. I have no idea what any of these knobs do. I've not read them, but... Yeah, I would have thought we would have had like hissing or something. I'm assuming that's the channel select. Do you need the antenna connected maybe or the mic to get that up? Should have a mic laying somewhere, it should fit. They all seem to have the same connector on them anyway. No, it's not made the blind bit of difference, has it? All the ones we got up here that I could potentially try. Not this one, it's got a different connector on it. Uh, <coughs> I suppose we could try this one, see if this one's going to light up for us. The other reason I've only done this temporary because I want to try all of these as well. Right, pop the handset off. Yes, we don't seem to have an LED display up on that one. Like I said, for all I know, we might just need the um, antenna connected. I have no idea what I'm doing with these. Now, this one actually hasn't hasn't got an inline fuse. I must have picked the bluntest bloody wire cutters I have. I haven't even got any wire strippers at hand either, so I've got to make do with these for now. Smudge is just glazing on the floor behind the camera. Like, have I not got anything bloody sharper than them in here? No. Wires like this, you um, black with the red tracer, I call it that because there's more black than there is red, is your negative. Back to the black. So, 
red to yellow because that's your positive. Okay, that's to power, so we'll power up. Power supply is on. This one's working fine. Well, all things considered, anyway, I mean, uh, might have a couple of segments on the LED not lit up. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Just wondering how many channels there is. Yeah, we've got a couple of LED segments not lighting up. They keep sort of flickering in and out, so I'm guessing it's just a bad connection. I mean, these look old. Why did the hissing just stop? I'll pick this up. Breaker breaker one nine. That'd be so funny if someone replied, wouldn't it? It will change wherever I go as well. Now, so the red light comes on when you hold the trigger down. Nice! That one works. Now, I'm just going to switch this off. So I'm pretty certain I can unplug this and plug it into this one. Possibly. very well at all. What about this one? Now that's an entirely different type of connector. Dang, I was actually hoping this would go on here. At least on one of them. It's not bad though, that one's doing the most isn't it? What plug have we got on the back of this one? Again, an entirely different connector. Right, not the end of the world. I can, uh, I can modify them if I ew, need to. That was, but it didn't feel very pleasant. Right, let's shift these out of the way then and we'll plug this one back into here. Mind you, this plug's not very good either. Look at the display. Oh, I've just noticed it. See that? I should think these would need to get them working again. <laughs> a very good service on the inside as well as the outside. Ooh. What's this one for? That's a, sh a shaman, is this one? Do we have a shaman? That's an Amstrad. Oh yeah, there's something right my mind in that one, isn't there? The uh, Rotel one. I actually prefer the two silver fronted ones. I bet 
when um, Kat sees this video, she's going to want these. Oh. Oh. Didn't realise that. We've got no innards. <laughs> I do like the Amstrad one as well. Yeah, I think I'm going to need a good old service inside and out, aren't they? All right, we'll get this unplugged out of the way, man. But yeah, it's as simple as that. Um, as for what resistors to use on the lighting, I don't know without looking it up. I can't remember. What I do know is that with the correct resistors, you can use the 12 volt line on your 3 volt LEDs as well, but you would need the correct resistors, otherwise you'll blow your LEDs from here to Kingdom Come. And back again, probably. Right, next. I don't think this one's worth messing about with. I've got more than enough Windows XP era. Uh, laptops, including Dells. I do like my Dells, but I think I have a screw missing from that one. But yeah, I think I've got enough of them. I don't think. This one's worth it, and the chances are, if I do find one on eBay as spares or repairs, it would probably just need the hard drive installed on it and some RAM. I've actually just found the hard drive for this, it's right here. Underneath um what well, goes in this end. I wish I still made modern laptops that did that. So you've got bits falling off of it as I unscrew things. I'm gonna keep these screws though. Holding the battery in that one. This one seems to be holding. Okay, that's new. I just unscrewed this little cover. Now, if I just zoom you in on it, you got that little bit of wire poking out of it now. Any ideas what that's for? I've never seen that on a laptop before. Hey Smudge. What are you doing Smudge? When I've done this, I'm actually going to try, emphasis on try, and make a video for the gaming channel. I did have one prepped for Friday. Well, recording for Friday, um, Friday, I should say. And then, when I went to edit it, I noticed there was a heck of an echo on the audio. I'll have a look at that in a minute. I'm actually surprised because that's an IDE drive. And this uses DDR2 RAM. Cost saving, I expect. Yeah, so I was not pleased, so I didn't get a video put up yesterday because of that. And then last night when I went to try and record another one, I felt like complete crap. Because of bloody hay fever again. Which seems to be a common theme weekly for me at the minute. Don't need these covers. I don't know why, but I will I'll take the uh, modem out, I think. Maybe? Yep. And the Wi-Fi card. There's the Wi-Fi antennas. Get on 
get uh, Wi-Fi modems that large anymore, do you? Is it still laying here? I know it got dropped and some stuff I needed to clean. But I did have one laying in here that was like that big, <laughs> tiny little thing. My right, hard drive is out. Um, might be worth salvaging the screen and the keyboard off of this. I mean, fixable. I could have possibly have found a hinge for this and a new bezel. It's a bit weird how it's uh, broken like that, but get rid of that out of the way. I mean, it didn't cost me anything, so. showing its age a bit as well because there's no uh, built-in webcam. Although having said that, I don't know if really modern laptops still have the webcams built in. It just depends on the laptop you go to. Now while we're on the subject of technology in this video, I was watching a video earlier today from um, a chap called Tecmo. I've actually followed his channel for a few years. He, he mostly um, concentrates on audio stuff. And he was doing um, a Bose smart speaker today's video, or yesterday's video, I should say. Um, And he was comparing it to the Apple, what was it, the Apple Home something or other, which I think Apple came out with, I think he said in 2018. And he bought one because, you know, Apple is supposed to be good, blah, blah, blah. The way he did an audio comparison with this Bose, it was a Bose Wave 500, if memory serves correct. Now discontinued. But he did a sound comparison between the two, and that Bose actually sounded better than the Apple. The Apple had a bit of tinniness to it. Which, I know I often slate Apple because I really don't like them as a company. But, uh, I was still surprised. I would have thought, you know, because Apple do actually make some good products. They do usually last. Now I can't, I can't really fault their products just the company I dislike. Anywho, when he told me, the, I was also surprised when he told me the price of that home speaker from Apple, because it wasn't actually anywhere near as much as I thought that was going to be. It was only three hundred and some odd quid, which. Seems to be about the average price for one of them high-end home smart speakers in general from, you know, different companies. So I think that's what the Bose was as well, sort of in that bracket. But yeah, I would definitely have preferred the Bose. I have thought about getting one, just for the fun of having one. Um, well, not, I don't know, would you consider the Google Dot and the Amazon version and whatnot as a smart speaker or you know when you go hey Google or Alexa or whatever because that's what I'd like I'd like to get one of them because I've got an Amazon Prime account but I just don't use all the features you know I don't buy from Amazon that often got some capstan tape there is it capstan tape? Tape? Am I saying that right? Actually, I've just realised my mum's got an X and they barely use it. What if they noticed if it went missing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
behind me. I did not want you getting that out of there. I've just got the screen cable, screen lighting cable that is at the bottom. Does that plug in? Yep. Yeah. I think that would only be good for a Dell like this one. Might be worth cleaning it up and putting it on eBay because it is a good panel. The question is, would it actually arrive at its destination still as a good panel? Actually, that reminds me, thinking of eBay. Um, sold Matchbox Convoy truck on eBay fairly recently. Now, I was a couple of days late with the postage, but I did post it. And uh, totally my fault, I hadn't checked my messages for one. Because I'm stupid, apparently. Um, So I didn't realise that the buyer of said convoy truck had messaged me saying it had not been received. And then um, I noticed I'd had a case open against me for you know, item not received. And even after I'd posted it, it was taking far too long to get to where it had to go. Which is actually the other side of Norfolk. <laughs> About an hour away from here, actually. Um, so I thought, well, it must have got lost in the post or something by now, so I just refunded, you know. And then I get another message from the guy saying that, you know, he felt so bad for leaving negative feedback because the truck had arrived after I um, refunded. Um, could I send him a request to review the or revise the feedback? So I did. There's very few, very few eBayers that would actually do that. You know, revise um, their feedback. But yeah, the, the lack of comms, entirely my fault. I was, I've been really slacking in that. There's actually nothing wrong with this hinge at all. It's just the plastic's all crap. Because that is still there. It's just all the screws and the plastic and the bezel and everything. That broke. It's still attached, this side. Just... Oh, no, the hinge has broken. Is it the hinge? No, no, it's just me. It's just this metal strap there, that's what I was thinking of. So, no, it is actually still good. I mean, I suppose I could pull the motherboard out of this and maybe it will do something on eBay. I really don't know. I don't know if it's worth it these days or if I'd just be wasting my time. But I'm going to take it apart anyway. These connectors with a passion. Okay, so. Oh! Apart from this one, I wish they designed them all like that. You just get hold of that tab and pull it. Cool. That's all I've done for the last three days. Well, I can't imagine that that would still be charged. Uh, that's where the processor is. Maybe it's there. The, the, I would have thought that one, because that's the bigger heat sink. Let's get the plastic off if we can. Just realised this is an older laptop, isn't it? It's going to have screws hidden on this side. That's why I took the keyboard out, because they always did that. That caught me at the very first time. 
like 20 odd years ago when I took a laptop apart found it in a skip actually. That caught me out. I tried everything. I was trying for hours trying to get this laptop apart and I didn't realise that you had to take the keyboard out and get to all the hidden screws like this. And this one's actually got several because I've just pulled three out. That's four. Five. At least Della's nice. They actually mark them as well. I think there's two more. Six. You know, I've marked them with like a little P. And that one. And I think that's the last one. I'll try and take that wire out because that's snaking through the palm rest like that. And then in theory, as long as I've not missed a screw, that feels like it's actually in there quite tightly this side. I missed a screw somewhere. Is there any hiding underneath the CD tray? Because I've had that before as well. I'm like along that lip. Nope. I bet that's an IDE one, isn't it? Yep. I could do with some SATA ones. I made a mistake of chucking most of mine out. Now I have no spares. Ah, what about the battery? No. I'm not sure I have got all the screws because it feels... No, oh, that one was already loose. Yeah, three. Yeah, not there. There's one I missed. How did I miss that one? I'm not the ones in the deep hole. I can't see the ones in the deep holes. Right. Ah. Okay, unplug the mouse pad. That's still a good bit. <laughs> but the only bit of the laptop that was good, apart from the screen, the rest of the plastics are crap. I might just leave it like this, actually. Because it would need all new lid and bezel. Um, hard drive socket which you can remove actually if I just pull on this little tab here two separate fans here as well I kind of want to take this one's the processor that's your processor what the hell is under this then is that the video chip? Because if it is, it's the first time I've seen such a chip. Um, on here, yeah. <laughs> oh no, I thought that was a different screw. A little bit of a fluff in there. It's a daughter board for something. Look. Is that like a mini miniature sort of graphics card? What do I do on my reading squids? I had them in here earlier. I've actually discovered that I do need these. I can't read shit without them. Oh, so there's an Intel chip on the board, but in this light and with these I still can't read it. I might actually do that off camera, just find out what that chip is. Because I bet that's a video upgrade for this. Because I can't see why else you would need the secondary cooling fan there. Like I said, that's your processor. And they're here.
which has got a smaller heat sink but the bigger fan. Lovely little Pentium on here. Not much in the way of a uh, thermal paste left on <laughs> look. <laughs> that certainly would have needed redoing in this. I think that's a speaker right there. It wants to do with the audio for something because we've got the other two speakers here and that's plugged in the same area 3 ohm 5 watt is that like a meant to give some bass or something is that what that one's for Look, two ordinary speakers right here now why didn't they just take that bit of circuit board all the way across there's really not that much of a gap and there is the space to do it. And they just decided to make like a little door board for these USBs and then connect them with a cable. From a servicing point of view, you know, if someone broke them, you could easily replace them. You know, just unplug, undo the screw, Bob's your uncle, you put the new ones in. So there's that advantage, but still, I'm surprised they didn't just, you know, connect it with the circuit board. I kind of want to power this up. Minus the fluff. Just to see if this would still output a signal to the screen with this doohickey removed. I'm assuming it's a video upgrade, but I've... does it actually say anything on it? Made in China, Revision A01. I can't quite make that out. Date 2006. It's got a brand on there, and I can't. Quite make it out. I had my magnifying glass in here. Push here. Why would you want to push there? Oh, because that's where the connector is. You want to put it on and push. Okay. That makes sense. I've actually put this heat sink on the circuit board with star bits. It wasn't like a gaming laptop of the time, was it? Is that why it's got all this um, funkiness going on? To be fair though, considering it's age, there's not a great deal of fluff in here. It's pretty clean actually. That's pretty that's got the most fluff in it. Oh, so is that grill actually. Tempting to rebuild it just for a challenge. See if I can find the spare parts. Uh, it could be because I've got the battery out. That's why. Yeah, that's why that's wobbly. So whatever this little cable is for here. It pokes out of there under that cover. It goes across and just plugs straight into the motherboard. Ah! So that is both hard drive and your IDE. I'm not IDE. PCI slot there. The PCI EEE or whatever it was. I can't remember what it's called now. Yeah, that's what's on 
top there, you can actually unscrew it and remove it. So Dell wanted this to be serviceable, didn't they? Hmm. And I've chucked a couple of bits in the bin, but there's nothing in that bin, that's a new bag, so I can... If I did want to go ahead and try to rebuild this, just for the fun, I could just rescue the two panels I threw in there, three panels I threw in there, sorry. Yeah. I did try to get this Toshiba working. But it doesn't want to play ball, and I don't think the screen's worth messing about with. I, ca I just cannot get this to boot from either USB drive or um, internal CD. And I can't be bothered with it. You know what's in that though, don't you? 18650 cells. at how many you can salvage from them once you've put them in a charger and charged them up separately a load of laptop plastics down there go in the bin haven't I so what is this four gigs so I had four gigabytes of RAM HGST I believe when I looked at this the other day, it's a one terabyte drive. An Intel Celeron processor is on this one, which I'm assuming... It looks like that's DDR3 RAM as well. I think this is a one terabyte, isn't it? Da -da -da -da. Yeah. I've actually got some more HGST drives up here as well. That's pretty much all that's salvageable on this. I can't salvage the processor because it's soldered straight to the board. Um, here's another little hint for um, model railways. Especially if you run... Um, oh, for peace sake, it'll come to me in a second. If you run um, DCC you run DCC sound and whatnot. Laptop speakers, these dinky little things. Very handy to um, put inside the loco for the DC sound. It's not going to sound the best, but I don't think many things of that size is going to sound brilliant. Speakers I mean. Oh that's going all the way under. Well, I don't need the plug. Now we lost. I've lost my cutters. What am I doing with my I hid them. <laughs> They're under there. There we go. Yeah. So if you ever run DCC, let's try and find an old laptop and take these out. You just hide that in the locomotive. Some, depending on the laptop, some are bigger than others, some are quite small. So it'll probably be a case of, you know, just shop around. <laughs> ah, look at this! Not saying about how tiny modern um, so tiny my screwdriver doesn't fit. I'll have to show you because I've got a screwdriver in here that fit. That's how big modern Wi-Fi is. So <laughs> 2006 
whatever this one is, has a size difference. And that's a big difference. I will take that off of there because I haven't got many that size. Not spare ones. We've got a spot for a battery there, but no battery. Why have we got no battery there? A socket. Motherboard? That would be worth salvaging out of this, I think, and putting on eBay because it is a fairly modern one. Yeah, I'm going to need a small screwdriver for that as well. Can I get the rest of the Mobo screws out while I've got the screwdriver in my hand, yep. Is there any more? Got one for the fan right there. Ribbon cable. Being held in place with a bit of yellow capstan tape. Flip that up. They're the type of connectors I hate, the ones with the little plastic flip-up tab, because they break so easily. I've had a pound for every one that I've actually gone broke. Well, that one doesn't have it, that just slots in. Same with that one. I wish they were all like that. That's the pad, the circuit board rather, for the mouse. It's going up here, so I don't know if I screen power or what that one is. That's the data cable for your screen. And unplug it. Yep. And there we go. I've got some motherboard that I could plonk on eBay. There's always the off chance that someone's going to repair one of these, isn't there? Need a board. And yes, I'm aware that these days people don't want to go spending lots of money, so it's just as well. I don't want lots of money for it, do I? I'm not that sort of a person. I'll get whatever I get for it. I'm that sort of person. I think it's been raining this evening. No surprise, it's meant to be wet most of the week. I'm trying to undo a screw, that's not screw. <laughs> Is that board free now? No. Probably unlikely that you would ever need something like that as a spare. It's got an audio jack on it, I think. Yep, USB and the Ethernet jack. So I'm assuming that's what that controller, or well, that chip is there for the Ethernet. The Ethernet controller. I've got one there for the mouse pad, you've got one there for your keyboard. To I don't think there's anything else worth salvaging off of that. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do with that. No idea. Anywho, this has actually given me a bigger itch to build another PC that I don't need. Ooh, excuse me. laughed and spoke at the other end at the same time. I have noticed I'm not the only YouTuber that do, does that because I did hear someone do that the other day but I can't remember what the video was that I was watching. Anywho, um, yeah, I did discover earlier that I have actually got an empty case down here. It's a really, really modern one though. 
And all I've got is really, really old motherboards left. Um, yeah, so... I would like to build... Well, I can't decide whether to upgrade the PC I've got in there next year or just build a whole new one from scratch. Um, probably starting with one of the most expensive parts, which would be the GPU. Um, yeah, not cheap bits of kit these days. But I would like something with at least 8 gigabytes of video RAM. That's only a 6 gig one. Which is, to be fair, it's working perfectly well for what I want. However, there is a literally one, maybe two games that I want that might sh struggle with that video card. Good for RAM, good for processor, but the graphics. In fact, I've found that with most games I want. Um, well, especially before I got a gaming rig like that, you know, it was always the graphics that killed it. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, Silent Hill 2, the remake. I've been watching CJU Games here on YouTube. Look at all these people getting a free shout out. Um, and he's been playing that recently, and it does look bloody good. I, I don't think I would mind actually going back and playing all the Silent Hill games. But for a remake, this actually really does look good. I don't know how well I'd do because I suck at melee fighting and whatnot in games. I just haven't played games like that in years. You know, or, you know, boom booms and things like that. Be careful what you're saying on bloody YouTube. Um. I think the last time I played any game that involved, you know, any shooting or anything like that was on the PS2. <laughs> um, you know, it's games like Black. That was one of my favourite ones. Right, anyway. That'll be it for this video. Uh... I've still got three on the computer to upload. Two have already been edited. I've just got to upload them. One I put on there earlier, transferred it from the camera to the PC, I mean, and uh, uh, it's got to be edited. To, 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 to. Yeah. Right, anyway. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. You know what to do if you like the video. Hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. And maybe consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Random electrical, electronic videos. Um, bikes. Lights. Traffic cones. Diecast models. Yeah, I'm still thinking I should have named the channel All Sorts or something like that. British All Sorts or something. Maybe I'll rename the channel. What do you guys think? <laughs> Maybe Life of an Englishman isn't really that fitting anymore. Don't know. You let me know what you think. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.